Hi, everybody. My name is Nick Justician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University. And in this video, we're going to start a series on how to use a non-standard joystick controller as a virtual production input in editor by uh, basically getting this data into the editor through LiveLink. So uh, this is going to take a couple different videos, but uh, it should be fun so that we can actually use a device like this that's connected to the computer via USB to uh, operate camera properties uh, or even fire off the uh, take recorder using a little red button here. So uh, let's get started on that. Um, before I start, I do want to point out this pretty cool video from Tony Boren. Uh, he published this about a month ago, and this is really the video that kind of got me down the right path. I had heard from Ray Mayata before that there was something called a virtual subject for Live Link, but never really figured it out until Tony posted this video about how to get an Xbox controller working in editor through virtual live link. So I'll link to this in the description. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, so you can take a look at that, but we're going to work, work on uh, working on this custom controller this time. So it's going to be a, a different uh, approach in general. So let's get started. I'll switch over here to uh, UE5. I'm running 5.0.2. And so we're going to need a few plugins, first of all, right away. So go to the edit menu, choose uh, plugins. And there's three plugins that we need. One is going to be live link. So I just type in the word live, make sure live link is selected. You'll want to select that if it's not already checked. Um, we'll also want the virtual camera. I'm just going to type in the word camera and uh, virtual camera here that needs to be activated. There's a basically a subsystem in virtual camera that allows us to basically uh, capture the events from uh, controllers while we're in editor mode. And so we're going to be borrowing that plugin. And then finally, because this is not a standard X input controller, we're going to be using a plugin called raw input. So I just type in raw, we activate raw input. Um, of course, I'm working in Windows here, so Windows raw input needs to also be selected. If any of these were not selected and you uh, enabled it, you'll have to do a restart. I already have all three, so I won't get that restart message. So uh, make sure you restart after you select those. Okay, so now that I have the plugins enabled, the first thing I need to do is configure this controller to work through raw input. So if I go to edit and project settings and the raw input plugin is enabled and I did my restart, I should be able to scroll down here and look for raw input in the uh, list. And here we have an location where we can put in device configurations. So I'll click on the plus button here. And so we have a single item that we've just added, index zero, and it wants a vendor ID and a product ID. This is essentially the USB identifier for this particular device. So we want to get that identification information and it's easy to retrieve. It's in our control panel device settings in Windows. So I can just tap the Windows key and type in the word device and go to uh, device manager. And this will give me a list of pretty much everything that's connected to my computer. And in particular, I want to go to human interface devices, expand that. And this shows up as a game controller. Now, if you have something that's a steering wheel or a keyboard or something else, you know, you may have to hunt around to find it. Uh, you can experiment by disconnecting and reconnecting it. So for example, I'll go ahead and disconnect this. And you should see that the uh, list refreshes, that game controller disappears and plug it back in again. And there's my game controller. So I can double click on this to open up its properties. And finally, I go to events. And this gives us down here in the information device VID 131 letter D and PID 0119. So VID, of course, corresponds to our vendor ID and PID is our uh, product ID. So um, each product. So I actually have a couple of these and each of them actually has a different product ID. Uh, something important to know is that these are hexadecimal values. So we have to enter them um, in a particular format when we plug them into the raw input. So 131D, that's our uh, vendor ID. So go over to Unreal, vendor ID. And because this is hexadecimal, I'm going to do 0x 
And then I can type in 131 and the letter D, capitalized hopefully. There we go. And so that's the correct vendor ID. I'll go back over to my device information and 0119. Again, even though there are no letters in this number, it is still hexadecimal. So 0x tells Unreal that it's a hexadecimal value and then 0119. At that, this point, oops, sorry, I mistyped that, 0119, there we are. Okay, so by default, raw input is going to map uh, various buttons on this to the generic USB controller. So button one, button two, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, Also the axes are mapped to the generic USB controller, axis one, axis two. So um, we've got everything mapped to events now, and, and that's everything that we need in order to get the data from this controller into LiveLink. So we'll go ahead and get as far as getting this data into LiveLink, and then um, we'll wrap up this video, and in the following videos we'll work on interpreting that data and using it for our camera. So I can close this panel and I am in a empty folder here. I created the, this controller comes from our um, virtual camera system, VCS. So I just made an empty folder called VCS LLBP for live link blueprint. And so that's what I'm gonna do is create a live link blueprint to interpret the data that's in this joystick. So I'll right click and go to live link. Of course, live link plugin needs to be active for this to show up. And then we have Blueprint Virtual Subject. So we'll select that. And then we'll select the role. And the role is just basically designating some predefined data that we can uh, have in our virtual subject, in our Blueprint. Um, the basic role is the one that Tony Bowen used in his video. I'm going to go ahead and use the camera role because I do intend to adjust camera settings with this. So I'll do Live Link Camera Role and OK. And now I have a new blueprint and I'll call this VCS LLBP. And maybe just to give it a number 01 to make sure it's different from the folder and control S just to save that and make sure it's in there. And so now the blueprint exists so I can double click to open it. Give that a moment. Okay, so here is our blueprint editor for the uh, VCS LLBP01. So we have two pre-configured events in here. There's one on initialize and one on update. So for this video, we're just going to focus on initialize. We'll be working on the on update and using the data in a future video. The main thing I need here is a variable to store all the data. So I'll go over to variables and click the plus sign and give this a name. I'm just going to call this VCS cam data. So this will be all the data for our camera. And I, of course, mistyped VCS, so let's just get that fixed. All right, there we are. And if we don't want a Boolean. That's just going to give us a true or false. Instead, I want some live link data. So live. And um, here we have all sorts of different kinds of live link information. And I'm going to use live link camera blueprint data. This actually contains static data and frame data. So uh, live link camera blueprint data. And I want to set some defaults, but I can't do that until I compile. So compile, and now I have access to the data structures. And uh, what I want to do is basically add a couple bits of extra information to this storage uh, variable so that I can have a, uh, you know, X and Y data for this joystick. So uh, let's go ahead and expand our static data. Some of the stuff that's in this static data delineates what information about the camera, this particular uh, live link blueprint is going to support. I'm not going to do anything with rotation or location, but I do ultimately want to drive focal length with this so I can use this joystick to zoom in and out. So I'll enable that and then I'll go to this property names and I'm going to add two values to this because I'm going to have an axis one and axis two. So plus and plus, and there's nothing here, just the word none as a name. And these, these are just going to be the names of uh, these data buckets. So I'm just going to call it axis one and double click here, axis two. 
And that gives me the names of the properties that I'm going to save. So that was property names. So the frame data is the data that's going to get updated every time we uh, get data coming through LiveLink. And in this case, I have property values instead of property names. Again, I'll click this plus sign twice. And now this will be where I store the values. I can just leave them set to zero. These are two floating point values that will ultimately store the data coming in from this joystick. So that sets up my variable data structure. And now all I have to do is initialize our LiveLink plugin. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is make sure I update the static data for our um, our live link connection here. So I'm going to right click and I will say update. And I'm looking for here it is virtual subject. There's frame data and that is not what we're going to do here. We're actually just going to do the initialization of the static data. And this will tell the live link plugin uh, what kind of data to expect. In this case, it'll be focal length plus two additional properties. So I'll choose update virtual subject static data. And we'll connect our execution pins. And we'll bring out our variable. We'll say get. And then I need to break this, I, uh, you know, separate basically the static data from the frame data. So I'll drag off of this pin and type in the word break. And now I've separated that break live link camera blueprint. Here I've got a pin for static and a pin for frame. And we can go ahead and click and drag from the static data pin to the static data input here and compile. So in theory, this actually will function right now. It just won't update any data. So just for fun, we can go into Windows. And somewhere in here, there is virtual production, live link. And we should get a live link window here. And now we can add a data source. So I'll click on plus source, add a virtual subject. So this isn't coming in through a message bus. This is a virtual subject that's built into our editor. We'll want to give it a name. I'm just going to call this VCS. And I can find, here's my blueprint, VCS LLBP01. Select that and add. So there's my new subject, VCS. It's a camera roll. Wonderful. Click on it. I've got data. And I can expand that. There's static data. And we have property names. There's our axis 1, axis 2. And we have frame data. And expand our property values. There's two zeros. But if I pick up the joystick and move them, nothing's happening because there's nothing in my blueprint to update these values. So let's finish this video off with updating those values. So again, we're going to initialize this uh, blueprint so that uh, we can take the events coming into the editor and send them into this blueprint to be uh, used to apply data into our frame data. So to catch those events, first of all, I'm going to need the virtual camera subsystem. So I'm going to right click here, type in uh, VCAM for short, and there it is, get VCAM input subsystem. So this is basically the subsystem that's going to grab our events. And then we're going to bind analog events uh, to this blueprint from that subsystem. So I'll drag off this pin and type in the word bind and analog event. This is this is not a button push, uh, you know, it's down, it's up. This is analog data uh, because it's, you know, an analog smooth joystick. So I'll click on bind an analog event. Uh, we'll connect our execution pins. So we'll make sure that we bind that event. The key is going to be one of the axes that is coming in from that raw input. So I'm just going to expand this and remember that axis one is mapped to generic USB controller axis one. Uh, while we're at it, we might as well do this again for our other axis. So bind analog event and we'll just choose generic controller axis two. So these are the two events we're going to bind and we're going to bind them to a new custom event, our pair of custom events for that matter, here in our live link blueprint. So I'll just pull from the delegate pin and type in the word custom or start we're typing the word custom, add custom event. And I'll just call this VCS X one. So this event will fire anytime data is coming in from the axis one and then delegate off of this second axis. Again, type in custom, add that, and we'll give this VCS X two. 
All right. So now these events will fire anytime the joystick is moved. And we just want to get the data from these and put them into our frame data. So first of all, I'm going to pull off from my frame data and release. And I want to choose break again so I can get the individual values out of that frame data. So break live link camera frame data. And uh, there's a lot of different values in here. And in this case, I don't need almost any of them. I just need the array of property values. So I'm going to uncheck everything else in here. Here we are. And transform also uncheck. OK, so property values. This is an array. And so um, you know the first item in that array is index 0. And the second item is index 1. So I'll pull off of this array. And I'll type in set. And I'm going to set an array element, index 0. Wonderful. And we'll connect our execution. And the value is actually going to be, we'll just pull off the analog event here and type in get analog value. And we will connect that to the item. So now the analog data from axis 1 is going to get pulled and put into the index 0 data. And we'll just repeat this one more time over here for our axis 2. So again, I'm going to do a set array element. This time, we're going to use index 1 for the second element. And uh, yeah, no fun. We don't have the fifth element in this one. Make sure we connect our execution pins and finally get our analog value. And of course, that's going to be get, get, get analog value. And we'll connect that to our item. So is my live link plugin is still open? OK, still nothing happening when I do this because I made all those changes, but I haven't compiled. So right here is my my zeros for my values. As soon as I compile this, I should start seeing values. Axis 2 and look at that. All right, Axis 1 is working. Why is not Axis 2? And there's our answer. We didn't connect all those execution pins, so we never bound this event. So connect these and compile once more. Bam. And there we are. So now looking here in LiveLink, I'm moving my joystick. When I go left to right, we see it looks like index 1 goes to uh, like 0.15-ish. When I go all the way to the right, it goes all the way up to 0.8 something. When I go to the left uh, center, you know, it kind of hovers around these values close to 0.5. And I can go up in the joystick direction, I get a 0.86. And if I go down, I get a 0.17 in the middle, something like 0.5. So the data is in there. That is great. In our next video, we'll take a look at how we can put this to use in the editor. Till then, have fun.